Hi there folks, Riyath here from tabletopminis.com and today we're going to talk about making or starting a YouTube channel. So this is a video response to Vince Venturella's topic of the week, which is um, starting a YouTube channel. Um, you know, content producers sharing their tips and tricks and what they've learned on their journey on YouTube um, from becoming, you know, a channel with zero subscribers to where, wherever they are now. So I thought it was a really interesting topic and one that's probably worth sharing our experiences with seeing as, you know, we've We've done quite a lot over the last six months and I think um, there's a lot of things we've learned along the way that might help uh, a lot of you guys who are thinking about doing it but haven't quite got there yet. So first thing I want to say is that anybody can do it. There is no prerequisites to starting a YouTube channel and sharing your content. Um, regardless of what other people m may have said or think, um, really making a YouTube channel is very, very simple. It's very easy and everything you see um, on you know anything to do with miniature wargaming really is um, is something that you can participate in. You know this isn't rocket science. This is um, painting and playing the tabletop game that's designed for you know at age thirteen up or whatever. So um, regardless of where you are in your kind of journey along the along the way, um, making a YouTube channel and sharing what you're doing and and stuff like that is, is definitely possible. And uh, don't think you can't do it just because you don't have any sort of experience that you think other channels may have and uh, as a roadblock for you. So anybody can do it, absolutely. So why might you want to start a YouTube channel? Well, there's many reasons um, and you know, different channels do it for different reasons. Um, it's a good way to share your hobby. It's an outlet where you can you know, share with a, a large audience what you're doing and, and use it as kind of, um, a, a way to funnel your work into a larger audience. Um, maybe you don't have a game store close to you, maybe you don't have a large circle of friends that you play with, uh, maybe you've just come back to the hobby and you really have zero friends that play Warhammer but you know you played it when you were younger and you really feel like doing it. I mean that was certainly the case for us here at Tabletop Minis sort of a year ago. Uh, me and my brother, we decided to, we were just walked past the Games Workshop store one day and we just went in and picked up some models and thought, wow, we had so much fun with this when we were younger, like let's, let's start playing again, see if we still like it and get that same feeling. And, you know, not having a circle of people that are, you know, uh, like-minded hobby enthusiasts, uh, YouTube can be a way for you to interact with the community, which is a, a great thing. Um, the other reason, another good reason is um, you can kind of share what you're doing and get feedback. So for example, uh, we've learned a lot of rules, uh, a lot of corrections, uh, you know, coming back to playing Warhammer, there's lots of changes and it's been really helpful to get critique on what we do with our battle reports and so on, you know, corrections to, to the way that we're playing. So it's helped us play a better game, I would say. Um, another a reason would be to you can make a lot of friends in the community. So, you know, our community is a very large one spanning the globe. So uh, you can make friends all around the world by just using your YouTube channel as a place to uh, talk about what you're doing and interact with other people. So that's another uh, a good reason why you might want to start a, a YouTube channel. You know, you can make some friends. Um, Certainly, uh, I've met people that have, um, you, you know, through the channel in the area where I am just because of the channel. You know, if it didn't have the channel, then it wouldn't have met them people. So, um, you know, it's a good way to kind of connect with others in your area that you may not otherwise do. And um, you could be doing it as a supplemental income source. So, you know, uh, you do get some ad revenue through if you monetize your videos on YouTube, which is quite easy to do. It's very, it's not a large amount of money at all, but it's it's basically if you're doing what you enjoy and um, making a little bit of money off it from from Google AdSense, then th that can be a good a good kind of additional uh, revenue stream, kind of pocket money to play with in the hobby. So. That's another another reason why you might want to start a YouTube channel just for a little bit of extra extra money, uh, and, and also if you've got a Patreon um, account or y you know it's it's one of these things that people who enjoy your content they can help support you. So it may not be a large amount of support, but you know it all adds up and might help you buy extra stuff and uh, and so on, which is good. And another reason you could start a YouTube channel is you're you're quite serious about YouTube and maybe making a business. And uh, you, you know, there's many channels out there that have turned their channel into a business, um, some over longer periods of time than others. And you know, there's, of course, there's a lot, it's a long journey to actually 
become a sustainable um, business because of your content creation. And, uh, you know, it, I wouldn't be naive in thinking that it's easy to do, but it's certainly possible and many others have done it and there's no reason why you couldn't do it. And, um, you know, as long as you do all the right things and you grow your channel and, and you can make a business out of it yourself. Um, you know, there's channels out there that, that make enough money to hire people, to, um, you know, commission paint their armies, to do all sorts of things. Um, and you know what direction you take your channel in is completely up to you. So I mean, may, that's qu a perfectly valid reason for starting a, a YouTube channel. You know, you may have um, create some content, create some additional content through a paywall and a subscription service. You may just put all of your content out there for free, and uh, people support you through Patreon or similar. Um, that, that's a, a reason why you might want to start a YouTube channel, and. Um, also, it can be quite good if you want to get some free stuff. So if you're a popular YouTube channel or you, you, you don't have to be super popular to, to get free stuff, um, as long as you've got an audience, it, you know, a lot of the independent suppliers out there, they want to showcase their product. So um, if you've got a YouTube channel and an audience, you can get some free stuff. So, you know, it could be things like gaming tokens or game mats, or it can be products, even like um, some box sets. Um, Certainly with Games Workshop, it might be a little more difficult. Um, I think they gave out some free, was it Betrayal at Calf sets to some podcasters, but I don't really think they do that for YouTube channels. But a lot of the other companies are more inclined to sort of give you product to to um, display and, and you know show off on your channel with because obviously they get sales because of that. So um, that's another reason why you might want to start a YouTube channel, get some free stuff as well. Um, Another reason is um, having a channel and communicating with people. I think it helps you grow as a person. So, you know, any, anytime you step out your comfort zone, I think um, you grow as a person. And for a lot of people, putting themselves on a camera and putting themselves in front of the internet, which is, you know, millions and millions of people, um, it can be difficult at first, especially if you're a little camera shy and, and so on. So I think it helps you develop as a person. So that's another reason why you might want to do YouTube. Um, just, you know, another way for you to kind of grow yourself as a person. And uh, we are kind of in a golden era, era of uh, miniature wargaming and technology where, you know, everything's, um, you know, the Internet's so powerful. Everybody shares a lot of things. Um, having a YouTube channel um, I think that, you know, there's going to be more and more people doing this type of thing where they create their own content, um, especially through things like Patreon, which helps support content creators. Um, it's never been easier to create content and to share it. So, um, you know, why not get in now while, while, you know, it's still taking off? And there's really no reason why not to. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about the whys there, but why not? What have you got to lose? There's nothing really to lose by starting a YouTube channel. Um, if you start a YouTube channel and then you, you, you decide to stop making content, you've lost nothing. Um, if you decide to start a YouTube channel and uh, it takes off into a massive success, then you've got everything to gain. So there's really no minimum investment. Um, you could be, it could be a YouTube channel where you just talk to, talk to the camera. It could be a YouTube channel where you're doing high quality battle reports. Um, you choose how much investment and commitment you want to put into your channel and um, there's really nothing to lose. So that's a little bit about the whys. Um, now let's talk a little bit about how the mechanics of starting a YouTube channel and, uh, and, and then we'll go on to talk about some tips on, on making a channel, growing your audience um, and just some sort of general do's and don'ts if you want to have a successful channel. Um, which, you know, some of the things that we've learned over the last six months, um, you know, none of it's gospel. We're still experimenting with things, learning things, but I think it's useful for you guys to maybe get some advice from, from what we've learned. So to start with, I, I would decide on what type of channel do you want to have? Uh, and, you know, what are you passionate about? It, uh, you have your, the content you create has to be you know, it has to be something that you're excited about, something that you enjoy doing. Um, otherwise, it's likely not to succeed, especially in the early days when you don't have an audience and you don't have any support. Um, you really want to be doing something that doesn't feel like an effort. So 
what sort of content you want to produce and you know, you know that could be a lot of different um, things I mean there's many YouTube channels out there in miniature wargaming some do battle reports some do um, you know they just share their work what they're working on at home um, some discuss the lore the story behind um, you know the Warhammer world and so on or, or you know their own kind of takes on things you could be a painting and modeling channel just showing you know what you're painting how you're painting it and uh, you know helping other people with their paint jobs and also getting some feedback so maybe they'll help you as well um, you could also be doing things like unboxing so new product that comes out opening a box and just showing people what it is and they're quite popular or you could be doing tactics and strategy so you know uh, just you know your take on on how you think something should be played and and you know giving people advice um, they're all um, you know, valid things that you can do on your YouTube channel and um, it's really down to you what, what sort of content you want to create. And then uh, think about how making the content will fit in with your normal lifestyle so, and your normal routine. So uh, you don't want to be unrealistic in thinking, okay, I'm going to create battle reports and I'm going to make um, seven a week and um, you know, after day three, you kind of you burnt out you've got nobody to play with anymore um, or, or you know you, you didn't have opponents in the first place really to, to fill that sort of schedule so be, be quite realistic about um, how much time you want to put into it how much time you can put into it without um, over committing and burning yourself out and other parts of your life being affected by what you're doing so um, that's, that's something to think about um, other thing is um, I would say try and create original content so you know there's a lot of videos on youtube that it's uh, you know unboxings might be a good example of this where you know a new set comes out and you just open up the box show people what's in the box you know if there's 20 videos out there showing that happening that unboxing then you know you doing a, a video on that's probably not that attractive because you know people it's already been covered um try and try and show original content so you know what are you doing like your take on things your advice uh your personality uh yeah just original content and um i would say also don't be shy so get your face on the camera a lot of people like to um connect with the person behind the the the, the screen so um, this is quite an a, important one, I think, and a lot of channels don't do it. Because, I think mainly because people are quite camera shy or they don't want to be recognized in public uh, for whatever reasons that might be. Um, if you're serious about your channel and you know, you, you're not too, too shy to do that, I, I would definitely get your face on the camera because then you know, it's easier for the viewer to make that connection with you. And yeah, create content where viewers get to know you and your personality. So any opportunity you can, um, you know, whether that be through questions and answers videos, um, just a lot of talking to the camera. Um, I think there's a big selling point on the channel. You have to get your personality across. You know, some people it comes easier than others. Um, some people it takes longer for, you, for the viewer to kind of connect with the the person behind the camera but i think the more you can do that um the more likely you're you are to um you know to retain viewers and and gain subscribers because people are really getting a unique um experience then rather than you know it's just something you know another channel's got a video just the same unboxing or whatever what, that's just an example um but you know you put some personality into your channel and that, that can be something you can work on, you know, it's not something that you have to start with. Um, it's definitely something that can develop. So some tips on how to create a channel. Um, first, name your channel well. So there's lots of people who have made channels. Um, they didn't really have any idea of what the channel was going to become. And, um, you know, in hindsight, their, their, name, their naming probably wasn't the best um, you know they didn't pick the best name for their channel so try and pick a name that's appropriate for the type of content you're producing but not too specific that it'll kind of shoebox you into doing one thing like an example of this would be let's say you're, you're do, you do battle reports and you call your channel uh, battle reports 40k and let's say a year from now um, you decide that actually 40k is not really that interesting to you anymore and now you're going to be doing 
um, Age of Sigmar battle reports. Well, imagine in two years from now, if you're doing Age of Sigmar battle reports only and your channel's called um, Battle Reports 40K. So just an example, so like for us, we, we call our channel Tabletop Minis, which is Tabletop Miniatures, and that could cover anything that you put on the tabletop, which is quite generic, and I think, I think that's quite a good way to do it. I mean, you could go for a name that really doesn't have any meaning also. Um, I try and avoid numbers like uh, 212 or 1984 or things like that. I don't think they really um, help much in your branding. So um, try and get a generic name that kind of is appropriate to the type of content that you're producing and then maybe come up with a logo. So you can make one your, yourself. Um, you know, I don't know how good you are at using um, graphic design software, but if you're bad, you can purchase a logo. Um, there's, um, you know, there's many websites out there where you can buy a logo or a branded logo and, and for commercial use if you want to uh, make ad revenue and stuff. Uh, and then you can use that branded logo. So uh, a, a quick Google search will, will you be able to come up with something there. And um, also a channel intro. So um, make some sort of channel intro just as a kind of starting point for your video. I think it makes the video look more professional. Um, don't do anything that's too long because people really don't like watching long intros and don't do anything that's got any audio on it that's really like boom, 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 boom. Because then every time a video starts, people have to turn down their speakers or, or it'll become very irritating. So try and do something that's um, a little bit low key, but, but you know, has a little, little bit of an impact. I think that helps with your videos. And then there's production quality. So production quality of your videos, it's a huge topic. And really, I don't think I've got time to give this the, the kind of the, the justice it deserves, but I'll just touch on a few points here. So when you make a video on YouTube, the most important thing, regardless of what type of content it is, is the audio quality. So uh, whether it's a video, or whether it's a podcast where, where people have just got it on in the background and they're painting, or it's a battle report where it's very visually, um, you know, exciting, but you know, the audio is the most important uh, part of the video. So make sure that your audio is good. It doesn't have to necessarily be expensive uh, equipment. You can get some very cheap audio equipment out there, like just you know basic mics that uh, or a headset that that you know gives you a decent quality of audio, and um, it will make the viewer um, appreciate it a whole lot more. If the audio is rubbish, nobody's going to watch your videos. That's an absolute fact. So it is the most important thing to create in videos is good audio. I don't mean amazing audio, but it has to be good audio. So um, cut out background noises where you can. Um, I'm sure you've seen some battle reports where, you know, maybe they've got, um, they're recording in, a, you know, a gaming club where you've got, you know, tens of people in the background all chattering away. And it's really, really distracting as a viewer. And um, it just brings down the production quality of your video. So try and record in a quiet environment where possible. Try and use a good microphone and um, and your viewers will definitely appreciate that the most. The next uh, most important thing, in my opinion, is the video quality and the content. Now, depending on what type of channel you are, it may be more important for the content to be um, you know, of, of higher importance than the video. Maybe if it's a podcast, for example, there really isn't any video. Um, it's all about the content. But generally, I would say these are around about the same sort of level of importance. Um, having good video and having good content, they're both really important. So to get the good video, what do you need to do? First, try, try and use a decent camera. Um, you know, you may be limited. You might only have your phone. You might, um, you might have a camcorder, a family camcorder. Um, you might have the, the disposable income to be able to buy a professional camera. Um, Either way, just try and do whatever you can to use the best equipment you can. Um, you know, it doesn't have to involve spending a ton of money and it's better if you can use what you have, especially initially, um, even if you have the funds to buy a fancy camera, maybe you want to start with what you have and then kind of grow into it. And then if you still feel a month down the line that, you know, you're, you're willing to put in um, some money to, to improve in your production quality, that might be a way to do it. So. Uh, for us, we've got a Canon XA10, which is a professional camcorder, 
Um, it's quite an expensive one. Um, and we kind of bought that at the start. But, um, you know, that's probably not the best way to do it. Um, and certainly not required. So go for the best video you can um, within your budget and without kind of sacrificing too much. And um, also, a good camera is important, but equally, at least equally as important, is to have good lighting. So a good camera in a badly lit room is you really is a waste of time. You need good lighting to complement your camera. So um, lighting is one of these things that is very um, underlooked. The importance of it is very underlooked, and um, you know you can get a much better video with a bad camera and good lighting than a good camera and bad lighting. So it's not very expensive to get good lighting um, and it depends on your gaming space or where you're going to record your content. Um, it's more appropriate, I guess, to battle reports and unboxings and painting tutorials than things like podcasts or, um, you know, m where the audio is, you know, more of the focus. But um, in my experience, you know, we, we kind of from the very start, we tried a lot of different things. We've tried reflectors, tinfoil reflectors on the roof. We've tried um, halogen lights. We've tried fluorescent lights. We've tried a whole range of different things using desk lamps pointed onto the, the uh, table. I think by far the best way of doing it is to hang fluorescent lights where you can um, for a number of reasons. Fluorescent lights are quite power efficient, so your electricity bill isn't going to be high. They're quite cheap and they're widely available, so it's not going to be hard getting them and um, e installing them is very easy. Um, there's many ways you can do it. It really depends on your gaming space, but um, if you get a couple extra fluorescent lights over your gaming table, I guarantee you, you will not regret the investment that you made because it just it makes playing a lot more fun and it brings out the models better, it brings out your gaming table better. Um, it's one of them things that it's just you know, when you've got sort of not so great lighting, you might be, it might feel normal to you. So you don't really think that you need better lighting, but once you see the better lighting on your table, you'll, you'll never go back. So I would say get, get some fluorescent lights. They're cheap, easy to put up, and um, they'll just make your videos a lot better. Um, another thing is, you know, you, you can use spotlights. If you're doing like a kind of talking videos, you can kind of use spotlights, um, try and avoid uh, having heavy shadows. So, you know, you don't really want lights coming down on top of you. It's better to kind of have um, a, a sort of one from the front um, or just, just uh, across from the front and then maybe a small one coming down on the back of your head, ideally, something like that. I mean, I'm no professional at, at lighting, but. Um, it's good to try and avoid shadows and, and try and illuminate your subject or wh whatever that is, the gaming table or the person, as well as you can. Um, so yeah, audio is most important, then the video and the content. Um, you know, try and find a filming space that um, it's a quiet area and um, hopefully you don't have to kind of set up and take down every time you record. If you can do that, that's, that's great. If you can't, then, you know, it depends on what res restrictions you have. Um, you know, where you live and where you're going to be recording and so on. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is structure your content. So, um, you know, have an intro, then your content and then a conclusion. So it's not like the video starts and you're in the middle of the battle report and then, you know, it gets to the end of the game and it goes from end of the game to the end of the video straight away. So try and have a little bit of structure. It makes it look more professional, I think. And uh, be consistent. So let your audience audience know when to expect content if you can. Um, you know, it can be difficult to do that. It certainly has been for us. Um, you know, having a fixed timetable and um, letting your audience know when you're going to produce content. But if you can, um, it's really good to do that because then your viewers, they know when your next video is going to come out, when your uh, next 40K battle report is or Age of Sigmar battle report is. And um, I think that helps kind of just um, build your channel a little bit. So then three main things, uh, just to talk a little bit more about them. Um, the audio, try and use a decent microphone if you can, even a cheap one, a headset or a wireless a lapel mic um, or a directional microphone. They definitely help reduce background noise and, and improve the quality of, of your production. Uh, another thing you can add is some background uh, music and effects. Um, there's many websites out there 
Um, the big one that most people use, or there's a lot of YouTube content creators use, is Incompetech.com and they offer music, royalty-free music that you can put in your videos and um, you don't pay any, any, all you have to do is credit the, the author, Kevin McLeod, and, um, and then you can use all of them, that, that music in your, in your video. Um, I would say when you, there's a tendency when you start making videos to keep your background music at quite a high level because uh, for you, or this is how it worked when we started making videos is, you kind of feel like it adds a lot of drama and adds a lot of effect to your video. But in actual fact, what it does is it, it kind of annoys people because it's too loud. And um, background music should really just be to kind of take away the dead air and the silence in between talking and things like that. Um, you know, I don't think we've quite mastered it yet, but I think we're getting better. So um, keep the background music low, 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 low. You know, some channels get away with not using background music at all. Um, some use it at a low level, and, and there's other channels that, that haven't quite figured that out yet. So that, you know, you, you would have noticed yourself when listening to their videos that um, at, at times it feels like you just want to turn the volume down, but you can't turn the volume down because then you won't hear their speaking. Um, so keep your background music either very low or don't have background music. I would say it's better to have it, but keep it at a low level. And then there's also, as well as the free websites like in Compitech, you can buy um, licenses on um, music that's available out there. A, a good website's Envato Marketplace, and they have an audio jungle where you can have a look through there and you, you can pick um, sound effects or background music. And um, you pay a one-off fee of, of uh, you know, it can be anything from like 10 to $20 to um, get licensed to use uh, um, the music in up to 52 different videos. Um, but, you know, if you're using that music for, say, an intro, that, that counts as one piece, so you can use that as many times as you like. So there is commercially available, um, commercial use available um, music out there if you want to go that direction. And it can be good to use that um, if you don't mind paying the upfront cost, because then you get something unique to your channel or not completely unique, but a lot of the battle reporters and content creators out there tend to use Incompetech.com. So a lot of the good music from that royalty-free website, um, it's already kind of attached to different channels and brands. So um, you can use it, there's no problem using it, but people might kind of feel like, you know, you're kind of encroaching on another channel a little bit maybe, or, um, and they might be sick of listening to it because they've heard it so many times. So um, getting something different is a good idea. We, we've done that a few times. Um, you know, I wouldn't say do it a lot, but um, it can be useful. And uh, with the video, um, using a decent camera, we already talked about that, or, or the best camera that you can within your kind of budget and, and your co commitment level. Um, also get a tripod. Um, I would recommend getting Manfrotto branded tripods, they're certainly good quality and um, they're perfect. Um, and also um, video editing software. So video editing is a bit of a minefield. There's hundreds of products out there ranging from a lot of free to use ones. Um, there's lots of paid ones. They all kind of do the same thing, although some have a lot more features than others. And it's kind of, um, it's kind of uh, you know it's a, you could g you could get a degree in video editing. There's so much to it, depending on how far you want to go. Um, as a new YouTube uh, content creator, you know you, I would start with something very basic, something very fr some, something free, and um, you know once you've got kind of a few things worked out, then maybe you'll want one of the packages that allow you to do a lot more different things. So we use Sony Vegas, but um, another good one's Adobe uh, Premiere Pro. Um, and there's a whole range of free to use ones that are also really good. Um, so it's completely up to you what you want to uh, do with that. But um, you know, you can learn about the video editing from YouTube videos. There's plenty of YouTube videos showing you how to make an intro with Sony Vegas, how to make an intro with uh, this and that. So you can use that as a starting point. Um, you certainly don't need any prior knowledge. So um, that's quite good. Um, also, be a little bit careful about copyright um, because if you're monetizing your videos, 
um, you have to, you, you can't, you know, um, infringe on other people's copyrights. So just make sure that um, everything that you do is kind of original stuff and you're not uh, plagiarizing or infringing upon anybody's copyright. Uh, that goes for the music you use in your videos and stuff like that as well. Um, otherwise, you might get a kind of um, like, uh, you know, a notice from YouTube to say that you're infringing copyright and then you have to show your licenses and stuff like that. So be a little bit careful about what you're showing. Um, it's not so applicable if you're using just like Incompetech, which is royalty free. Um, and another thing is make decent thumbnails. So a lot of YouTube channels, they'll just kind of take they won't even make a thumbnail, they'll just title their video and then YouTube by default takes a frame out of their video and that's the thumbnail. Um, I think if you want a professional looking video then um, use a thumbnail and, and spend some time creating a, a nice thumbnail. So you know maybe you've got a banner with a, with a title, you can bring in photos, um, you can put in some effects. Um, it can be quite fun making thumbnails so um, definitely do it. I think um, if you're consistent with your thumbnails as well, it kind of helps make your channel look organized and quite professional. Um, and it can also be used to kind of grab the attention of a viewer. So if your videos go on to Bell Lost Souls Game Reel, for example, and somebody's just scrolling through the videos there, if your thumbnail sticks out, then you know, you're more likely to get somebody to, to look at your video. So um, I would say definitely spend some effort on your thumbnails. Uh, a lot of people don't, and I think it's definitely worth doing. And the next one, content. So content is also crucial to um, growing your channel, to having a successful channel. Um, so you've got the good audio, you've got the good video, now you need the content. So some tips here, speak clearly um, and try not to waffle. Um, you know, create value in your content. And what I mean by that is, you know, sp don't have lots of dead space or um, most people don't like listening to people waffle on about something. Like, you know, try and get to your point quickly um, or your, you know, you, that doesn't mean make your videos short. It just means try and make, uh, create value in your video. So there's lots of uh, engaging, interesting things happening or being talked about. So uh, I think that's one, you know, big uh, problem with a lot of videos on YouTube is that there's just so much waffling in the videos that people just, they either flick through it or they're just turned off and they won't subscribe and they'll just go and look somewhere else for content because um, you know you either haven't got to your point quickly enough or your video's not exciting enough um, or even the way that you're talking to the camera, you're just, you know, maybe if you're, you're being a bit too monotone and it's just, you know, it's like watching paint dry, people just, you know, they, they're not engaged by that. So, um, don't waffle, try and have an idea of what you want to put into your video. It's obviously different if you're doing like a live podcast or live um, paint sewed or something like that where you know it's going to go on for hours and hours and there's no real structure to it and it's just kind of um, a hangout like a Google hangout. Um, obviously then there's going to be a lot of waffling and kind of joking around and stuff like that. Joking around is good as well. That, I, I would say that there is value in your content if you're joking around because that's something people like uh, listening to. Some, more for some people that is. But try and cut out all of the kind of boring, um, unexciting or waffle, waffle time um, that people don't really appreci appreciate. And um, your, your video length should be appropriate to the content. So. Um, you know, it depends on what type of content you're doing. If you're doing, let's say, an unboxing video, you do not want a 15 minute long unboxing video generally, unless it's something like maybe um, when Age of Sigmar first came out and the star set, because there's a lot to talk about there. But generally, let's say a unit of Space Marines come out, a new squad, and, you're, and people are watching your video because they want to see what's in the box. Don't make a video that for the first 12 minutes, they're just looking at the front of the box and you're talking about Games Workshop. Like, kind of get to your, po get to your point quickly so that, um, y you know, people don't have to keep skipping through to find, you know, the reason why they came to the video in the first place. If it's a battle report, um, try and keep it to sort of under an hour, around about an hour, or split it up into parts if you need to. Um, some people do, don't mind long, long battle reports, but generally people, I, in our experience, um, anything over an hour becomes a bit too long for one sitting for most people. 
So yeah, video length is totally appropriate to the content. Um, you know, if it's a painting tutorial, that could be however long, I guess. Um, it all depends on what, what you're doing. And what else? So now some tips for battle reports. So this has really been our forte since we started the channel, has been making battle reports. So we've done a lot of other things, Q and A's, um, a couple of painting tutorials, stuff like that. But I guess from the battle report perspective, we've got the most experience. So some tips here, make as immersive a visual spectacle as possible. So that means um, have a nice gaming table, put some effort into your scenery. Um, put some effort into painting your scenery well and a huge one is use painted models. Now I can't emphasize this enough, if you want a professional looking um, YouTube channel you need to use painted models. There's nothing worse than looking at a sea of grey plastic even if it's the most impressive army on paper, if they're not painted nobody will want to watch that stuff. So it's better not to put out content than put out bad content. So do not put out um, unpainted terrain and models if you want to have a professional looking uh, video. And um, like I said before, have some structure. So for us, what we do is we have an intro, you know, quick intro, just, you know, saying hi and, wh and what's going on. Then have an army overview. So, you know, have a, a shot of the armies that are fighting and go over what units you're using uh, relatively quickly. Um, then we cut into um, the scenario and the objectives with the kind of look on the table. So you show everybody what the table looks like before deployment, before models are on the table and talk about what the objectives are for the scenario or battle plan or, or whatever, the mission. And then, uh, and then get into the turn, so turn by turn um, and we include all the dice rolling. So that's another big one. Um, some people structure their battle reports differently and it is kind of down to personal preference but in general I would say that most people like to see the dice being rolled so th they like to follow the game me you know methodically through every turn and every step during the turn because then they really they're seeing the whole battle they're not having to just skip to conclusions from the turn a and some people a lot of people they do it by the turn because, or at the end of the turn, they'll just summarize because it's it's quicker and it's easier to do it that way. And you know, if you can't um, do it, sort of, you know, show all the dice, then um, you, you know you might not be able to for whatever reason. But it, I think that um, you know, if you want to have a successful channel doing battle reports, I think showing the dice rolling is really important. And. Um, you know, show off the table and the armies with different camera angles and dist distances to the table. So what I mean by this is, you know, there's a lot of video battle reports out there that you have like maybe one camera angle from above and you see the whole table and then one camera angle from the side and the whole battle report, the camera never moves. And as a viewer, I personally, I find that quite boring and um, it's much better if you can kind of move the camera around so people can see around the table. They're not just getting one angle on the table and you know, moving the camera in and out so people get to see the models and it just makes the video more exciting. And we, we've done a little bit of experimenting with that um, using static shots but changing the camera angles and using moving video. Um, and even though the production quality, it could be argued that is higher when you have static shots, um, it's more exciting from our feedback, we've found that it, it's more exciting to be to have the camera moving around the table a lot, and um, you know, show banter where possible. So, um, you know, you want to convey the information, what's happening in the battle report, the steps to the battle report, but you know, having some fun and like everybody when they're playing miniature war games, they always have you know, there's always a bit of laughing about and kind of joking and funny things happen and people are oh you rolled that you, you know try and show that in the battle report because people like to see that it's entertaining um, you know it's something we're kind of working on as well because a, a lot of um, good stuff gets cut out just during the editing process but um, you know try and uh, minimize that where you can and really some well, and now let's talk about growing your channel. So you've made a channel and you know, you've got one subscriber, which is you from your other U YouTube account and um, you want to grow that audience. So some tips here, um, 
First, like we touched on, start with the basics. Um, good audio, good video, good content. Um, use social media, make a Facebook page, it's not hard, and share regularly. So it could be it could be stuff that you don't even think is very important, but just, you know, people might wanna just get kind of look into what you're doing. So uh, update f Facebook regularly and, uh, and use that social media. So things like forums, um, for us, we use Warseer, Daka Daka, Bell Lost Souls, Bolter and Chainsword, uh, Cool Mini or Not, um, they're the big ones. Um, you, can, you can get onto the Fate 212, um, you can get onto their kind of, what do they call it, the, the, the list. So when you update your website, for example, your new post will go onto the kind of side column of Fate 212, that's quite a good way of um, growing your channel. Um, with Bell Lost Souls, there's the game reel, which you can sign up to. And, and you know, if, if your content's really good, you might get asked to do front page articles for Bell Lost Souls, which, which helps grow your audience and, you know, get more exposure to the community. Um, interacting with other content producers, that's quite important. Um, you could collaborate. You could do kind of one-off events where you're maybe having a battle against another, somebody from another channel. This is stuff that's been done before and, it, and I think is successful. Um, and things like Vince Venturella's channel, you know, he brings in people for like Warhammer Weekly, um, you know, any opportunity you get to kind of talk about the hobby and, and you know, uh, kind of widen your, get your kind of uh, net out there um, is definitely a good way to grow your channel. And, uh, and you know, interact with, your, with the people on your channel. So when people comment or ask questions, um, try to answer them where you can. Um, Sometimes it can be hard, um, especially if there's a lot of comments, but you know, just try, try to do it as much as you can. Um, and also there's Google Plus. So on Google Plus, there's a number of communities out there, uh, Warhammer YouTubers, Age of Sigmar, Warhammer 40,000 Battle Reporters. Um, if there's not already an established community, you can make a community. Um, like for us, when Age of Sigmar first came out, there was no Age of Sigmar community, so we made a community. And uh, that's been quite good. I mean, we've got, I think there's about 200 uh, members or so of it now. And, you know, people post their, their, um, their work to there. Um, it's another good way of kind of just, you know, getting your content out there. Um, and yeah, just share as much as you can. Reddit, there's lots of subreddits that you can put your, um, your content into. Um, that's another good way of sharing. Uh, you can create a blog. Um, creating a blog can be quite easy. You just go onto WordPress and um, you know, they can host your blog for you. So you don't, it doesn't cost you anything. You just um, have a blog up there that you update um, and you know, people subscribe to it and can check it out. You can create your own website where you post your content to also. And that can be another good way of being able to um, do more than just show videos through YouTube. So you can have, um, you know, you can have your own articles there. You can, you, there's lots of different things you can do there. Um, and yeah, that, so that, that's pretty much it. You know, ask questions to your audience, answer comments and questions where possible. Um, use um, analytics where you can. Google Analytics is quite good. Try and figure out what content's working the best for you and um, you, you know what the audience is kind of uh, what's gaining traction um, you know try and kind of give the viewers what they want where possible without you turning your channel into something that you don't want it to be so the most important thing is that you're creating the content that you're passionate about and um, you're enjoying the whole process more important than maximizing your views unless of course you're going down the pure business route and you're just doing this for money and i don't think many channels and many people uh, really do this just for money because it's, it it's not really a money making kind of um uh you know niche uh, or it can be but I, I i really don't think many people do it for that reason they do it because they love it so um yeah and what else so um don't be a one-hit wonder by trying to be ridiculous. So what I mean by this is don't burn your army on camera hoping to get a million views and then expecting that to be some sort of long-term strategy for succeeding and you know getting subscribers and so on. I think a lot of people play up to the camera too much um, and I don't think that's a good way of, of going about it. Like, um, you know, try and 
create consistently good content, whatever th that is, you know, podcasts, battle reports, so on. But don't try and just do things that are outrageous to get some attention. Um, that, that's my view on it anyway. You know, it does work for some people, I guess, but um, I don't think that's a good way to get long-term growth. And uh, use your YouTube annotations and cards. So when you have your video made, um, use annotations, add a little subscribe button where you can, put a card in the corner so that you know people get notified, you know, maybe support your channel, maybe it's um, take a look at this. Um, I think you know it's easy to use and, and um, there's no reason not to. And um, yeah, so conclusions really, um, you know, stay positive um, about your channel. Um, you know, uh, growth can be slow to start with, but it is kind of like a snowball effect. So, you know, the, the bigger you become, the easier it is to get more people, more subscribers, more support and so on. Um, growth takes time. So, um, you know, don't congratulate yourself too much or berate yourself too much. Uh, be your genuine self. So um, people love personalities, um, sometimes more than the content. So really try and show your personality um, where you can. Don't try and hide it. Don't try and don't be shy. You know, if you're putting you videos on YouTube, you're really wanting to engage with the community and kind of open the door to interacting with people. So, you know, get your face on camera. It doesn't cost you anything. And there's really no downside to it. Um, the internet's really not as scary as you might think. Um, and yeah, just don't be hard on yourself. Um, you know, have an idea of what you want to get out your YouTube channel. Um, you know, that could be just lots of subscribers. It could be if you're maybe trying to do it as a way to show off your painting work to get commission painting work. You know, maybe your idea of success is, be, is you know, getting them commissions through the channel um, or having people recognize you in the game store. Um, or it could just be an outlet for you. It really doesn't have to be anything. You could start the YouTube channel with no specific goal, just a way of sharing some of the stuff you're doing and that's perfectly valid. So I think that's about covers it from us. Um, you know, we could go into a lot more detail about the editing and tips and tricks and so on. And we might do that in future videos, but this is just a quick response to you guys who are thinking about making a YouTube channel out there. Um, do it. There's nothing to lose. Um, the minimum investment is zero other than your time. And um, it can be a very fun process, um, especially when you start getting good feedback, which for the, for the most part it will be if your content's um, semi-decent. Um, and you'll really enjoy it. And if, if you know you get bored of it over time and you, or it's too much work and you, and you end up stopping, uh, you haven't lost anything. It's just been a kind of journey where you've, you've, you've dipped your feet in YouTube and it didn't work out. But, but it really, I, um, I could, couldn't recommend it enough. So for all you aspiring YouTubers out there, just do it. <laughs> and I guess that's where we'll leave it. So thanks Vince Venturella for um, posting the topic of the week. And I hope uh, my thoughts have been insightful. So until next time, see you guys later.